How is the unification of all cult sects accomplished? The unification of all sects begins by offering the leaders of these cults a role in a truly active and functional international bond of multiple occult orders and secret societies, and to act, for now behind the scenes, as it were, as part of a de facto world government. The goal of such an international bond would be to establish a global government based on ideological pluralism and ideal number theory, comprised of practicing occultists and self-styling magicians. The allure of authority over world affairs using the arts of Solomonic magic is not a new concept. However, creating a bund as like a United Nations of modern occultists may be an idea whose time has come at last, given the Internet's ability to link people around the planet more or less simultaneously. Of course, students of history are all rightly wary of the idea from every angle. Since the era of the Delian League in ancient, Egypt, in ancient Greece, through the 20th century League of Nations into the current United Nations with five permanent member nations on a security council and a congress of all other nations in the General Assembly, the idea of complete and singular worldwide governmental rule has always been a bad one. Likewise, the idea of bringing together competing schools of esoteric belief systems with vastly conflicting ideologies and creeds is also doomed to fail, as demonstrated by Crowley's inability to more than plant and cultivate seed lodges of the OTO, which organization he had hoped would serve as a bond organization in and of itself. The York and Scottish rites of Freemasonry, Freemasonry remain paranoid and tight-lipped about even their geometric craft secrets, such as squaring the circle, etc., fearing everything outside the strictest observance of the ancient and accepted rites as being potentially dangerous, clandestine Freemasonry. On the other end of the spectrum, the OTO of today operates countless lodges and hosts countless events with countless members and yet offers little order anymore by way of its knowledge lectures per each degree for the aspiring neophyte and primarily relies on merch sales to fund ritual orgies. The idea these extreme opposites could be brought together to negotiate the fate of the world, all under a single tentpole, to even think such an idea may be downright dangerous to today's status quo. Such a proposition is, after all, a potential threat to the existing social order. To claim you want to establish a global government as a bond like an esoteric United Nations, unifying multiple occult orders and secret societies under one roof, may be a counterintuitive goal, even to a practicing magician particularly one who only uses sigil magic to help remind themselves to catch the bus on time, as is all too commonly the case nowadays. The fact there will likely someday be a global government remains, as well as our ability to influence its nature beforehand. I have only proposed the POD's model, models of Atlantean democracy, as an alternative to the many dystopian ideas promoted by modern futurists and science fiction authors. Of course, the POD's plans extend only so far as the recruitment and formation of such a bond as the foundation for Atlantean democracy, and so they do not mention all existing sects and orders and cults around the world today, and they pay zero heed to any existing religious creeds. There are no Jewish or Christian or Muslim degrees in the Bund, although the hidden mysteries of all are revealed within the POD material. The POD has no place for modern faiths because it respects all belief systems equally. 
There is no class or role that can only be played by anyone of only one particular religion, or etc. 